And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Rhyme. And today we're going to be taking care of a commenter's biggest concern. After the last video, everyone's biggest concern appeared to be that we were going to scold Santa Claus when he came down the chimney. Um, yes, I can see their concern here. Now, if we check at the bottom, you see that the bottom of the chimney is actually not that bad. It's only about 140, 150. Uh, a standard Santa Claus should easily be able to handle temperatures in that range. However, as we start to go up the up the uh, chimney, you'll notice that the temperatures here start to go above four or even 500 degrees in places. Four to 500 degrees, that's a little bit too hot, even for uh, for one of your more robust Santas. So what we're going to have to do here is install cooling along the entire length of the chimney. Now, I've been doing some prep work. In the meantime, you can see some uh, temporary blueprints laid out there. So far, we only have, was it five? Yes, five little cooling modules attached to the chimney. So I figure if we put in another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, another seven more modules, this area should definitely become more stable. Now, up here, I'm leaving this. Uh, I'm not going to tackle this just yet. I, I have some plans I want to try out on this later. So for the time being, we're just going to see about stabilizing the temperature here. Now, I know I know Christmas has passed, but we've we got to make sure that it's ready for next year, just, you know, so that Santa is not going to get scalded. That would be, I'm sure all the dupes would be horrified. And, uh, the most annoying thing about dealing with this, though, is trying to install the doors. Uh, what I have to do is delete these two tiles here. Then I have to try and install a steel door. But the moment those two tiles are deleted, all the heat from in here, which is, you know, almost 400 degrees, yeah, it immediately wants to try and escape, which is bad. This whole area is going to become really hot. And I can't stop the heat from transferring until I've put in the door and it bricked it up with window tiles. Yeah, just, just wonderful. Let's have a quick look at the temperature overlay. Oops. It'll be fine. We'll get this done fairly quickly. Come on, just build it, build it. We'll queue up the diamonds and hopefully they don't do the diamonds first. And there we go. Boom. What's the temperature looking like? Well, diamond tiles are over 200 degrees. Doors, 240. Yeah, let's just uh, put that to above. It opens up. Perfect vacuum seal. And now the temperature should stop going up. Oh, thank God. Yeah, that's just uh, one of the joys of installing these. I've had to do that on seven of these contraptions. Uh, where is the next step? The next step is we're going to have to fill all of them with a layer of petroleum to make sure we keep the heat in. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. The moment the petroleum arrives, you set it to sweep only, just so that they don't uh, keep coming along and filling it. And boom, done and done. You know what? Let's uh, copy the settings from these all the way along. We can just uh, turn off the sweep only and make sure they all get done in a timely fashion. But yeah, this is... I've never tried a bulk steam turbine construction project like this before. It's a bit uh, odd. I really do like the Blueprints mod, though. The Blueprints mod makes this so much simpler. If you'll notice here, you'll see that this design, it fits in just in between our farms and the uh, the chimney, the rocket chimney. Now, I would love to say that that is by design, but realistically, I just got really, really lucky there. The design I came up with happened to be just narrow enough and my farms just ended to stop right there. I really wish I could claim I'd planned this far ahead. Oh, that would be quite an achievement, but no, this was more just a case of pure blind luck that the two of these just managed to squeeze in so tightly beside each other. If there was one more space I could fit in a fire pole, that would be even better. Theoretically, I suppose I could by ripping that out, but no, no, no. Double layered that for a reason. I'm going to keep these two separate. Anyway, uh, yeah, next up on this, I think it's going to be time to start uh, putting in the second layers. We have to put in another layer of liquid in these, remember, because we've got to force out all the gases. So I think it's salt water or brine we chose upon, one or the other. All changed. We've got uh, petroleum, one layer of brine, one layer of water, and that'll give us a perfect seal where there'll be no other gases in there. It's just my preferred method of doing it. Some people like to turn them on first and then just as the steam kicks in, seal them up just then. Uh, I suppose that's okay. If, well, that should work. It's just uh, I prefer to I prefer to have everything sealed before I start. Also, that looks like a flag. Is that the Argentinian flag? Nope. Did a quick Google. That is not the Argentinian flag. I wasn't even that close. Oh, well. Oops. Uh, anyway. I'm also finishing off the piping. This is the cooling loop. That cooling loop all the way from the bottom of the map down here. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, this... Uh, wait, no, here it is. This cooling loop here, we're going to keep extending that up and up and up. If this ever starts to overheat, as in it can't handle the cooling requirements, all we'll do is we'll throw in another cooler somewhere along the way and just re-chill the, the liquid as it goes along. It shouldn't be that hard. I think we've got more than enough super coolant to fill this whole loop. In fact, we may have a lot more super coolant than that. Uh, on the star map, I eventually went out and we got a quick look at this gas giant out here and it's, yeah, it's fullerene. It's just masses of fullerene, which means it's even better than going out to this gilded asteroid. The gilded asteroid is only 35% fullerene. This is going to be 100%. You send out two cargo wagons, that's an awful, awful lot of fullerene to bring home. 
Anyway, I don't even need it. I've already got the first load of fullerene back, and with 700 kilos, I think we'll be fine. Anyway, let's uh, skip this forward a bit while we get our cooling in place. I'm also going to have to break in here and start uh, putting in temperature shift plates, just so we can make sure we drain all the steam completely. Piping all complete. Only thing left to do now is hook it up, uh, which is, yeah, right here. That means we're going to need the pliers. Uh, oh, come on, pliers. Uh, let's see, spit that there. Join the two together. Done. Now we've got flow. Let's make sure we've got enough uh, super coolant in the tank to make sure that that won't run out. Uh, how are we looking? Wait, nope, wrong one. Damn, I have so many different steam turbines everywhere now. Uh, we got 4.4 .4 tons of super coolant in there. We should be plenty fine. Okay, time to start throwing on uh, steam turbines up here. We won't uh, be enabling them just yet, but we can at least get started on placing them. One down a bit. No, damn it. I hate when it loses the picture, but I think I can just place it based on where its uh, plug socket is. Done. Uh, once all of those are placed, we can start turning these all on. Maybe start... Actually, it doesn't really matter. That is so roasting in there. This entire steel wall going up along the side, that is going to be our heat sink. That's what's soaking up all the heat from the steam and allows us to siphon it out. A few judiciously placed uh, temperature shift plates should make this absolutely magical. Now, are we almost done? One more to go, and then we'll, uh, we can start flipping these on. All right, we are ready to rock. Every single one of them is loaded up. We have super coolant flowing through. Yeah, our cooling solution is... Active. In that case, let's change this to if the temperature is above 190. And we should open the doors. Temperature's not above 190. Let's see how long that takes. It's usually been pretty fast. Uh, copy settings. Yeah, it's already starting to steam up in there. Same down here. Done, 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 done. Yeah, we're going to have an awful lot more steam power going onto the grid soon. Energy production, power consumed, and power produced 26.72 kilowatts. How is that possible? I only have a 10 kilowatt generator. Oh, solar. Ah, uh, yes, yes, that would explain it. Lots and lots and lots of solar. <laughs> oh, and the hydrogen generators, yeah. Never mind, never mind. Uh, this is all starting to kick in. This should this should start draining this area of heat, and yep, yeah, that's getting down to much more livable temperatures. Once this goes down a bit, I can break open some of the viscogel locks. I have one viscogel lock. Where is it? Uh, come on, where are you? Wow, my, my dupes are going to have to go for a bit. I can break this open here, send in my dupes and start installing all these temperature shift plates. Ooh, you know what? Uh, why don't we make a little quick blueprint of that? There we go. A temperature spike. Uh, use blueprint. Yeah, you use the arrow keys to change them. Yeah, and then I'll just have to lay them along here, just right about there. Wait, no, middle. At the bottom of the door. Yeah, that'll give it shit. it hopefully give the better f heat injection. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> the dupes are going to have to walk an awful long way. The only entrance is down the bottom, so they're going to be sprinting up that ladder for quite a distance. Uh, at the same time, I've hired the final duplicate for up to exactly 38, well, well sorry, 40 duplicates. The four of them are currently in rockets, which is why we're down there. Oh, and we just hit 1300 cycles. Uh, I am going to open these doors, let the dupes in, and let those uh, temperature shift plates get built. Here comes the team to go... Oh, here comes the team to go uh, get everything done. Wow. Uh, this is going to take them a while. Also, yeah, we're in the middle of a load. Okay, I'll skip this forward until most of this is done. I also forgot to maybe put in the ladder. I maybe should have included that with the blueprints, but, you know, it'll be fine. Uh, down here, you'll notice the bottom half of the chamber is full entirely of carbon dioxide. Most of it sort of uh, eventually wandered down there. Unfortunately, we're injecting some steam right now. Uh, the reason being, when the temperature shift plates go in, they solidify the liquid that's up there. And why is that there? You know what? We'll mop that up. Uh, oh, and I want to change these as well. I want to make sure that this uh, doesn't activate until it's definitely, definitely, definitely surrounded by carbon dioxide. There we go. But just uh, with the steam and the carbon dioxide milling around in there, occasionally it would spit out the steam. Yeah, like there, it's it spit out some steam, which would then condense and, yeah, I'd ended up with over here. A little bit more of a safety precaution, putting them a tiny bit further away. Boom, there we go. Right, with all of that done, we can skip it forward some more. We've got all these in place, and we should have this perfectly ready for our next Santa Claus visit. All done. All of the chamber has now been reduced to about 140, 150 degrees. That should, well, maybe not quite the top, but, you know, we're, we're, we're close, we're close. Anyway, this needs some testing, though. We need to fire off another rocket, because the plan is to have a rocket going continuously. Once we have a rocket going continuously, we should be able to keep firing them non-stop, and hopefully generating energy and water. Ooh, which means I should probably seal this up again. 
yep, that, that would be a good idea. I don't want any of my uh, dupes going in there. Also, as well as that, it does have a tendency to sort of vaporize uh, visco gel locks. Oopsies. Don't want that to happen again. All right, good. I just want to make sure no one gets stuck in there. I think that should be that. There we go. All done. Uh, launch time. How's this doing down here? Oh, we have a few pieces of iron. You know what? That is all fine. We'll slow down the time a bit. I want to see how this one plays out. Uh, the steam in here. When I've been launching these, I've been trying to keep a track of how much steam is coming off of them. Uh, where's the... Yeah, the wires have turned green. As far as I can see, it keeps spitting out steam almost all the way to the top. Which is... Well, really, really useful. Uh, let's see. So you can see down here, was it the, nope, that's not what I want, steam, seven, eight, eight kilos, it's going up to eight kilos of pressure. I love the way the rocket is so far away from the doors that the regolith can't fall down fast enough to get destroyed. That's, uh, that's excellent. Uh, so we've got, say, three kilos here, you see, eight kilos of steam right behind the rocket. It constantly keeps kicking out steam pretty much the whole way up the map. I used to think it would stop kicking out steam after a certain point, but it seems to just decrease a bit, but not ever stop completely. So as we keep going up, you'll notice, for example, uh, over here it's say, 2.1 kilos, and behind this it's 2.9. There's just there seems to be a lot more steam that comes out of it on its way back down, though. So I'll monitor that when it returns. But for now, yeah, that's a really nice steamy corridor, and all of our steam turbines should start kicking in shortly now, as the temperature has gone up to 600 degrees. Yeah, those steam turbines better get to work, otherwise Santa's going to get scalded. Anyway, that's gone at the top. What I want to do is, I was thinking about putting in steel doors. It was recommended recommended in the comments that I put in just regular doors. That was recommended by uh, Alex Nickel and Snipe, or 2 uh, They both recommended that I just put in uh, some steel doors down here, let's say. And then what happens is, they'll be on the same timer and everything, so that the moment the rocket exits and the close signal comes, they'll close instantly, as opposed to the 34 seconds or so it takes for these bunker doors to close. Which means I should theoretically be able to save more steam. And for the time being, I don't want to complicate the build just yet. I want to see if we can work without them. Just, uh, I like to strip things out and make them as simple as possible. My uh, my design philosophy is more uh, brute force simplicity and then scale it up like crazy. Uh, as, as you can probably tell by the size of this stupidly ridiculous chimney. Oh my god. Yeah, um, for power-wise, it seems to be generating not as much power down the bottom as up the top. Uh, I'm going to have to do a quick check through here to see what's happening, but it seems the top ones, uh, those steam turbines are all about, oh, no, all the steam turbines are generating about the same, about 370 watts per turbine, and where is our rocket? Our rocket is 39% of the way there. So, yeah, let's maybe let this run a couple of cycles and see what happens. And it turns out I'm not very bright. Uh, well, okay, we all kind of knew that. Uh, it's not the magic cloak right I should have been looking at, it's Santa's sleigh. So it turns out Santa's sleigh is 90% of the way done, and the doors are already starting to open. This is uh, one thing. Depending on how far away the rocket is detected from, might, I might lose a bunch of steam at the top. That's why I've got this sort of dual airlock system going on. I think what I'm going to do is start siphoning the steam out of here using gas pumps. Uh, what I can do is I can tuck them in under here, under these uh, under these bunker tiles. I can stick in four, maybe six, four, six gas pumps, something like that. I can stick them in here, and they should be shielded from meteor strikes unless they come in at a very acute angle. It would be almost, well, it should, might be... A, might not be impossible, but it might be very difficult. I can always shield them a little bit more if needs be. Uh, but in the meantime, let's get ready for the rocket's return. I want to see what it does. We'll uh, we'll turn on the gas overlay when it hits, so we can actually see what it's causing. Oh, there it is. Uh, gas overlay. Perfect. Uh, let's do it slow speeds. No, I can't tell anything because there's no carbon dioxide. Ah, buggery. Uh, simplest way to check. Let's see, we got about four kilos of steam pressure all the way through here. Then once we get to the base of this, nope, still nothing much. Hmm. Do we have to go, oh, eight kilos, there we go. It's coming out of right about here. You can see there's eight kilos of steam right there. Wow, okay, so it's dumped a lot of steam in behind it. That's perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. All the uh, steam turbines are at, uh, say, about 300 watts, maybe a bit less, 250, no, it's 250 watts a piece on average. I worked out about 250 watts, so about a little bit over 3 kilowatts of power was still being generated on its return journey. At some point, this is going to have to go through the carbon dioxide cloud, at which point we can get a much, much better view of the water it's generating. You'll be able to see that there's water being created inside the carbon dioxide that wasn't there before. You'll just see it sort of streak behind it. Yeah, diluting everything down. Perfect. That is... And let's see what happens to our... Wait, one second, let's speed this up. 
Let's see what happens to our steam turbines down here. Well, let's look at that. Power production's going through the roof. Turns out dumping lots of heat in there. Really good idea. Uh, 740. What are we doing down here? This one doesn't quite get a, as high a temperature. It's probably because the carbon dioxide down here is uh, making things a little bit more complicated. Once this is fueled up, though, it's immediately going to take off again. And I dread to think what that's going to do to the temperatures down here. <laughs> oh my god, it's already a thousand C. I had to make all the tiles down here of this steel just to be safe. And something just flashed. What was that? Gold? Yeah, liquid gold. Oops, something melted. Anyway, uh, let's just see what happens here as it goes up to spout. Once it passes through the carbon dioxide, yeah, it's dumping off more water as it goes everywhere. You can sort of see the trail of water behind it as it goes. I think this is going to be quite profitable steam-wise. This is definitely going to be far more power than we generated on the last run. We'd completely drain the tube before we launched it last time. In one launch and one landing, we have now accumulated an enormous amount of power. All right, let's, uh, let's skip it forward, and I want to see what the steam turbines are at when the rocket comes back. The rocket won't be back for three cycles, or 2.7 cycles. When it does, let's see what the steam turbines are at, and let's see what our, uh, our chimney's temperatures are at. One little downside I've noticed is... Yeah, all the temperature shift plates, uh, well, a bunch of the granite temperature shift plates that got put down here, they, yeah, they melted. <laughs> they could not handle the temperature. I, yeah, I desperately need to rejig all the piping here. All this piping needs to be moved. Uh, the liquid oxygen, the liquid hydrogen, it needs to be squished up, and I need to stick in another cooler right here. I need to stick in a cooler right there to help cool this area. Otherwise, I'm never going to be able to keep up. Both of these are just flat out right now. Uh, I'm going to have to increase the temperatures in here. What are these already at? Oh, wait, no, they're, they're already maxing out at 850 watts. I don't want to be dumping any more, and then I'm just wasting the heat. I may have to just to cool this area down. Damn. That is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, uh, stop faffing about. Let's uh, go back up to the top. We'll wait for the returning rocket and make sure that we're still getting air. Or see what kind of power returns we're getting when the rocket returns. And the rocket is due back any moment. Uh, that's perfect. What I want to do here is once the rocket starts to land back in the silo, I want to take a quick look at what all of our steam turbines are at. It'll give us a rough idea of how much power we're generating. Well, this will be the lowest power point of the, the, of the chimney. Right about here. From here on, it's about to get in a double injection of heat, the landing and the takeoff. So if we note down how much power we're generating, this is literally the lowest point of, of power in the cycle. I have counted up the power on every single turbine, top to bottom, and it's generating 6.2 kilowatts of power right now, which is a lot. That's a lot of power. 6.2 kilowatts of power, and that's at its lowest ebb. Right now, all that power production is about to spike up tremendously. Okay, slow down a bit, Rocket. You're going way too fast for me to actually scroll with you. So just as it's passing through here, it's just dumping off a metric crap ton of heat energy in here, which we're going to siphon off. The only problem area is this one here. The reason being, it just gets too hot. Oh, and I had turned this off. I want to actually, you know what? I'll let it run one more circuit, circuit, and then I'm, uh, then I'm gonna have to turn it off. I, I, I need to do some maintenance and changes here. Namely, I need to do a big refit of this area. This whole area needs to be redone. I need to rip it out, and I need to put in two steam turbines in close proximity to each other here. I still need to leave a doorway, but I, I need a, I need something to help cool down this area. It just gets too hot. Look, it's a thousand degrees in here, and that's just with landing. Once this hits takeoff, it's going to get even worse. Uh, at least it didn't melt the temperature shift plates at the bottom, but yeah, there's carbon dioxide down there. Also, I'm pretty sure this thing is generating carbon dioxide on its own. You'll see there's patches of carbon dioxide dished all throughout it. It would appear hydrogen rockets do give off carbon dioxide. It's just, uh, yeah, very small amounts. And there it goes again. <laughs> it's trying to escape the, the rocket chimney. It's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> Godspeed, Santa's sleigh. Yeah, yeah we, we definitely need to get this cooler in here. Reason being, that's a little bit too warm for the Santas. Um, again, one more run, run more run. I just want to see what the temperatures are like when it comes back the next time and how much power we're generating. I think it's going to be a little bit higher because uh, the system hadn't fully warmed up. And that we still haven't even gone around to siphoning steam out of this. You'll notice some of the steam pressure here is like three, five kilos in places. It's... A lot of steam. I'm going to have to start siphoning that out or it's going to become, actually, it's going to become a really great stabilizer. That was one thing I wanted to do was cram this place with about 10 kilos of steam. And if I leave 10 kilos of steam in here, it'll help stabilize the temperature in between launches. It shouldn't overheat so catastrophically on launch and takeoff because there'll be enough steam to absorb all that extra heat. Well, theoretically. Yeah, uh, I think I think we'll just skip forward another three cycles and see what's happening. In the meantime, I'm... Uh, 
sort of prepping this area for more steam turbines to go in. We still haven't even thought about uh, siphoning out those steam. And I think what I'm going to do is place the gas pumps up here, dump them into steam turbines and have that turned into water, which we then feed into electrolyzers to power this whole system. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be self-sustained. The rocket is coming back and I have counted up all of the steam turbines we've got in place. We're up to 7.4 kilowatts of power being generated. I would like to put a little asterisk beside that. That's at this very exact moment when it's at its lowest ebb of heat. There's about to be a landing and a launch which will dump two waves of heat into this whole chimney and spike the power production way back up again. So this is at its lowest point. This is like having your bunker doors closed above your solar. That, that, that's, that's what's going on here. This is our weakest power generation moment. And it's still pretty close to an entire petroleum boiler. That is... That's ludicrous. That is absolutely ludicrous. Oh, and uh, yeah, though I was still getting a few questions about the leaky oil fissure. This is the leaky oil fissure that uh, I had to entomb earlier in dirt that we were trying to uh, to cook up. However, uh, yeah, it's all started to boil to sand, but we should be fine. So long as this tile right here doesn't get exposed, it won't leak any oil into the chamber and we won't end up with sour gas and gunk getting in there. It would be an extremely lucky uh, meteor that would somehow get in there and hit that. I don't think it's even possible. Well, I'm not going to say it's not possible. Oni always finds a way to mess you up. Anyway, let's uh, let's have this rocket land and see what it does to the steam pressures and uh, everything in here. Dear Lord, it's five kilos of pressure all throughout there. That might be the max, though, that I can uh, attain before things start to get a little bit wonky. Oh, did I turn this off? Did I turn off the rocket? I didn't turn off the rocket today. Uh, above. Yeah, there we go. It off. Please don't launch again. Please don't launch. Right, I think we've got enough steam pressure in here and definitely enough temperature. It's time I did some rejigging on this, namely right here. I need... I'll probably have to squish up this water tank as well. I'm going to need a bunch of space here just to stick in a whole heap of steam turbines. I want three or four of them. I might want to just put in nothing but steam turbines all the way up here because this area is unconscionably hot. I mean, there's no way a Santa Claus is surviving in there. Not unless they've got in some good suits. Uh... All the worst to the tube, it's only got spiked up to about 300 degrees or so in places. About 320? Yeah, it's about 320 is the worst we've seen. I think, yeah, I think this is working. By placing them this far apart, it's about stable. I've got a few more I'm going to place up here, though I think I'm going to pipe in gas instead. Instead of having them feed off of the uh, bunker tiles, I'm just going to siphon steam right out of here and dump it into these steam turbines and have them destroy it. Um, yeah, so any steam that escapes this spout gets sucked up in here and immediately dumped into the steam turbines. Mm, might work, might work. Uh, I'll have to do some playing around with that. Anyway, uh, next up, yes, next up will be uh, a rejig here. I may need to get my hands on some insulation, though. I'm going to need a lot more insulation to get this done right. Uh, if I want to move the pipes around, I want to make sure I don't accidentally dump oxygen or hydrogen in here. It would complicate things. Currently, there's only steam and carbon dioxide. That's much easier to deal with. If I don't use insulated pipes in here, though, made out of uh, insulation, I'm... I'm far more likely that the hydrogen is going to pop things, especially considering we're going to have to move the pipes at awkward angles. So, that means we're going to need more isoresin. Unfortunately, I never prioritized that. I was always prioritizing fullerene, which we have in an abundance. Now, I already am getting isoresin from this planet. We, we have a return ship going there, but we've already strip mined it. The only other planet with isoresin nearby is this one. That's it. All the rest... There's nothing else nearby. None of the closer planets. There's no ice resin. I also don't have any gas giants with it or anything like that. Everything close by. Yep, yeah, there's, there's only one more. And I haven't even scouted these three planets yet. So, yeah. Kind of stuck. That means I need to get a rocket running to here immediately. So, I think we're going to get rid of this old cargo ship. It's the giant one, but, well, it has served its purpose. It's time for it to be retired. In its place, we will replace it with a... Uh, just a quite small rocket because we need to get to the second planet planetary ring for this and this should hopefully start bringing us in the ice resin we need I believe the words we're looking for here are Achoo! and there we go rocket done everything gone sorted that will be ice resin returning back for oh cool we're getting that falling uh, regolith little thing that yeah that happens every so often it'll go away when I reload the game Okay, so that's that all done. It's automated. All of that will get dropped off over here, and I've set it to automatically produce isoresin. Or, uh, not isoresin. One second. We'll go uh, to bit. We'll zoom out Alton S to get into screenshot mode. And where was it? It was down here. Ah, yes, here we are. I have queued up the molecular forge to produce nothing but insulation. Lots and lots of insulation. We have 4,000 units of reed fiber, and we have a Draco farm that should be feeding it quite handily. Our Draco farm over here is choking along nicely. 
Now, I'm not sure exactly how much plants you need per Dreco. So I've got six plants. I, I'm putting six Drecos in each one of these farms. Seems to be working out fine so far. Uh, the only starving warnings I'm getting are for the ones over here that we're, uh, we're harvesting. How much reed fiber is there over there? Ooh, give me a... Give me a reading, come on. Reed fiber, 1,044 reed fiber from that grooming station. Yeah, we're getting a lot of reed fiber out of this. It's it's quite handy. Anyway, uh, what we will do, though, is we are going to have to wait until this has harvested all of the, well, harvested some ice resin, and we've got enough insulation to do uh, the insulation piping down here. So what I'm thinking is, well, I'm going to go take a nap for a bit. <laughs> Before I do, though, I think we're going to turn this back on. I would like to uh, maybe stress test this a bit. What we can do is... Turn this on, let it run, and then when I come back in a few hours, hopefully we should have a better idea of how much pressure this can take. I mean, currently, I'm not sure. I think I have enough steam turbines to keep on top of all this, the heat being produced. If I don't, I'm going to come back and find this much hotter than it should be, and quite a few things might have melted and there might be problems, but maybe not. Maybe it should be stable. I would kind of like to know exactly how many steam turbines it takes to eat all of this heat, uh, though maybe I should do this first. No, 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 I'm going to leave the top half of this here as is. I don't want to mess with that just yet, though it is going to get unbearably hot up there, isn't it? Yeah, who cares? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. Um, okay, right, so we'll leave that run and we'll see how long it takes, or when we come back we'll see how much hotter this has all become. Much hotter, much, much hotter. It's been a hundred cycles. Uh, it crashed out, so I had to reload the game. Uh, one of the mods caused an issue, but I've reloaded most of them anyway, and it all seems fine. Right now, though, the interesting bit is the rocket has come back. The rocket is currently 100%. It's at the top of the map, just entering the silo. I've counted up all the steam turbines. We're generating 10 kilowatts of power. We're not eating all the heat as quickly as it's been produced by the rocket, which means all of the steam turbines are flat out. The temperatures down here are about 500 degrees. Around here, it's about eight to 900 uh, as we keep going up, it drops and drops. It gets to about 300 and then stabilizes near the top. Of, yeah, it's 300. Yeah, 300 all the way up here for the rest of it. So we can, and the steam pressure is at 28 to 30 kilos all the way up this chamber. Yeah, we need to start siphoning the steam out and we need more steam turbines because we're not actually eating the heat fast enough. That's, oh, that is glorious. We're generating 10 kilowatts of power and we're still not eating the heat fast enough, even with... I think it's 12 steam turbines. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yeah, 12 steam turbines. And we still cannot consume the heat being generated by this fast enough. Wow. Okay, that, that, that because the next step, after I just uh, throw in a couple of steam turbines here, maybe three steam turbines here, I want to mount a second rocket. What we can do is we can just build a second rocket right here, stack it on top of the other one. And so long as we launch them, alternate launching them, and they don't ever be in the silo at the same time, we should be able to double the heat production which means I'm going to need twice as many steam turbines. So you're going to need 24 steam turbines at least, plus the other three, so we'll be up to uh, 27 steam turbines? We're going to need at least 27 steam turbines if we go that route. Who am I kidding? We're going that route. This is... <laughs> the, the, we, we have to see how far we can take this, obviously. Uh, I've also managed to accumulate a little bit of iso resin in, or uh, insulation in the background. We've got 14 tons. We should hopefully be able to do enough insulated piping for the hydrogen, though it might be a bit tight. I might have to let this run a little bit further in the background. Um, yeah, I, I, but I'm going to cut this out here. It's There's going to be a lot of work that goes on with this. Damn, okay, what's the temperature in there? Yep, yeah, it's spiking up to about 1,000 degrees, but it's not that bad. I think we're okay down here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll be grand. We'll be grand. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying your Christmas holidays or uh, whatever holidays you're having and uh, good luck. <laughs>